Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to talk about an update that uh, just came out for Mountain Lion Server and that's the caching service. Now in the last screencast we talked about software update and some of the benefits of using that to have all of your updates downloaded onto your server so that uh, your client machines don't have to continually uh, take up the bandwidth of your internet downloading their own individual updates. They can just basically access those updates from your server and just install them. Well, one of the problems of that is is that not all of the updates now are coming through software update from Apple. A lot of those updates now are coming through the Mac App Store. And so how do you make those things work? And so uh, just as I did the software update uh, tutorial last uh, week, now all of a sudden they've come out with this caching service. And really it's the caching service that takes care of that. So before I show you how to install this, let me just go over the differences between software update and the caching service uh, because you'll probably as a home user want to use the caching caching service more than the software update service but each has its uh, sort of its pros and cons so the first thing is is on the cache uh, on the software update uh, you only get access to software update only and so if you remember software update is when you you know come up to the Apple menu up here and you click you know check software update and it will uh, then go and sort of manually check for updates uh, to only Apple types of things usually and so that would include things like um, you know, just uh, major so uh, operating system updates, updates to iWork, iLife, you know, those kinds of things usually come from software update. And so that's how, that's how that works. Now, with the caching service, you get the software update benefit because a lot of the software updates now are coming through the Mac App Store with the addition of all of your Mac App Store applications. So any of the applications and things that you've purchased or downloaded through the Mac App Store, those things also will be cached and stored on your server so that you can then, all of your clients then, will access those things. Now with Software Update, you must configure each and every one of the clients to check your server instead of checking uh, Apple servers. And I showed you last uh, tutorial how to do that. If you want to know how to do that, just check out uh, uh, the last tutorial, Tutorial 19, on how that works for Software Update. But with the um, caching service, there's no client configuration. So once the clients are on your network, they're able to access those things automatically and you don't have to set up anything with the clients. They will automatically go to your server to access those things on your network. Now with software update, uh, the downloads happen on startup every update. And so, in other words, once you set it, uh, it'll automatically update those things or you have to go in and manually select them, uh, the things that you want to download if you selected the manual method. But with the caching service, they on it only downloads software when your clients on your network have requested it. So when you've requested a download and you're downloading it to your computer, whether you're downloading an app that you've purchased or doing an update, that is when the caching server kicks in and just keeps a copy of that on the server so that if anybody else wants to access that, they can access it on the server. And one more difference between uh, software update and the caching service is with software update, uh, you have client management where you can manage your clients, you can tell what updates they do get and don't get. But on the caching service, you have no client management. So basically, once they hook up to it, they can download whatever they want, they can put whatever they want on their machines uh, in terms of updates, and so you don't have the management that you have with the caching server. Now, what I want to show you again before I show the setup is let me just show you the help file that uh, Apple has put together for uh, the caching server. And I just want to show you a couple of diagrams they put on there that shows you how this works. So, for instance, you can see here, here's the internet, here's your router, here's your server, right, your caching server. And then all of your clients basically are just sort of hitting wirelessly your server to get their updates. Now for some of you who might be in more complex situations where you have multiple subnets because you've got uh, various servers as you can see in this particular uh, setup here, how does that work? Well if you're connected to sort of the same uh, router or NAT, right, gateway there, uh, what will happen is it will basically, they will all access the same caching server. So you don't have to worry about setting up separate ones and I've got to keep redundancies and stuff like that. Uh, it should work okay with these multiple subnets uh, for uh, you to be able to get these uh, basic basic updates. Again, if you're a home user, you don't have to worry about that that much, but for those of you that might be setting up some offices and things, that gives you a little bit of background on how that works. So let me just uh, pop that down and let's talk about now how we actually set up the caching server to get it to work. And you can see uh, here, it's like any of our other services, we've got the big on-off button up here. And then you notice we've got a few extra settings here. 
And so let me go over those for a minute. First of all, you can select the volume that you want your uh, caches to go to. So all of those downloads of, of that software, where do you want to store those things? It's usually not on your main server drive because you don't want to take up all the space there. You usually want to put it on another drive. And so this makes it easy. You just click the Edit button and basically select the drive that you want to put it on. And once you do that, it's going gonna, it's gonna to set that up and put that uh, on that volume. And I'll show you what that looks like in a minute once I've gone through these different settings. Uh, you also have the cache uh, used. And so it'll show how much you actually are using for these various files files and updates that you've got sitting uh, on your server. Now I, uh, I've tested this out and so that's why I show a number there. You probably won't show a number until you actually have downloaded uh, some updates, but uh, there's uh, what I've got so far there. You can always reset at any time just by clicking this button here. And when you click this button, brings down a little warning that says, hey, if you do that, it's going to basically wipe out all of the updates you have cached on your server. And so uh, you do have a way to sort of just uh, start from scratch and blank it out again. I'm going to cancel because I just want to leave that alone. And then you finally have the option here to set the cache size limit. Um, you know, you can go unlimited or, you know, minimum of 25 gigabytes. And so uh, that's kind of nice because if you don't want to get out of control, if you've got a ton of apps on the Mac App Store and all that kind of stuff, uh, you might want to limit your size so you don't run out of drive space. And so this gives you an easy way to do that. And you can see uh, this is much simpler to set up than what we had to do with Software Update, where we had to use the terminal uh, to kind of set different locations of where we wanted the files to go and um, you know, we really didn't have the option on how big of a size, and so that's why you might want to do it manually. So this really is a simpler service to set up. Now, once you throw the switch, then the service is live. It's all set up and ready to go. And let me show you what it does on your volume so you know where to look for this stuff. So I'm going to uh, pull up a finder here. And let me just show you where it, where it sets everything up. So here I am on my, on my uh, Drobo. And if you look, it sets up a file called library. Now, uh, what I did was I opened this up so you could see what was inside it. What you're going to see is a folder with a little um, red dash on it, which basically says you don't have access. If you want to have access just because you want to see in the folder, real quick tip, uh, you just go to your uh, in, in, library info here. And what you do is you, come, you uh, authenticate on this. And then once you authenticate, you just click the plus button here and add a user. And what I did is I just added an admin user and just said read only so that I could get into the file. All right, so that's kind of how you do that if you want to see what's inside the file. And you're going to have to do it for every file within this folder. Uh, so that's just one of the ways that you can do that. So it creates a library uh, folder, server folder, caching folder, then a data folder, and then inside that, you've got an asset info database, and then each and every one of your uh, downloads will have its own file. Uh, and so it just got a bunch of numbers on it because the database knows what that refers to. Um, but, uh, but that's how it works. And so it sets that information up on your server and then just, you know, begins to add all of the things in there. So that just shows you kind of what it looks like once you set up the caching um, service so that you can kind of see what's inside there and how it works and how it functions. Uh, let me just do this. I'm going to put this down for a second. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, pull up a software update here and I'm going to just download something and show you how it works. Okay, so here I am on the uh, Mac App Store, and I just went into my purchases area just to kind of uh, take a look at some of the stuff I've got here. And so let's say I just I want to uh, I want to install one of these programs. So let's just say I want to install this uh, screen float uh, or this uh, shade uh, program here. So I just click install. And so what's going to happen now is it's going to ask me for my password so that I can authenticate. And it's going to start to uh, download that. And you can see it's waiting, it's configuring it, it's downloading it. And so it's about 4.1 megabytes uh, is what the file is. And so what it's going to do is download this. And what we're going to do is check to see, uh, does it really cache that? Does it really add it uh, onto my server? Uh, just, to give, just to show you kind of how it works. It'll give you a good feel for what it looks like. So it's just, uh, just about there, just about installing. And uh, once it's done installing, then I can uh, take a look at it. So just about done. All right, so it looks like it is installed. So let me put this down. It does take a little bit of time to update, but you can see, look it, we were at 4.4 before, now I'm at 8.5. So it definitely did cache that particular piece of software. And just to show you again, let's go back into the uh, data file here on the Drobo, and let's see, uh, it looks like what it did, let me pull out and come back in, it looks like it adds it into this file. So it doesn't add individual files, maybe it probably caches them by uh, within certain files and, and probably has a code for that. But at least that shows you that uh, 
uh, it did add the information on there and just by looking here it has cached it and so it's a great service a great way to be able to track how much you have on there you can see if this is getting too big uh, gives you a little bit of an idea of what people are downloading and those kinds of things but it certainly then will speed up other other people's ability uh, to add those programs to uh, their own computers because you've already got it cached on your server so it'll speed it up so uh, really if you look at the difference between this and uh, in the software update I would probably say that for most <clears throat> for most people the caching service would probably be the best but you know it, your mileage may vary if you want a lot of control over what people can and can't do at this point the only thing you can do is work with software update uh, because the caching service isn't yet uh, sort of customizable enough to be able to limit it so that's all I have for this week. Uh, hopefully that helps you uh, understand the caching service that was just added by Apple. Like I said, a really good service. Glad that they added it. And I'll come back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.